All right, welcome in to uh, episode number 17 of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil, live here from the Ice Den Chandler. Home away from home, I keep using that phrase, but it really is. This is a great spot to be, um, not only to do our show, but for, for hockey events. And yeah. As you can tell, each and every week it gets a little busier around here, a little busier. A little noisier in the background, a little busier, <laughs> and we love it. <laughs> Absolutely, we got to get a little more of a live audience now participating with some of our guests because the uh, the guest list will get a little bit bigger as the season starts. Absolutely. So we look forward to that. Tonight we're going to have a special guest. We're calling it Painting the Ice Purple. TCU uh, is taking over the show tonight with Danny Roy coming on. So we're going to look forward to uh, three segments with Danny. Talk a little bit about the program in general, since yep. he is the hockey uh, director of hockey operations. Yep. And the head men's coach. We'll also talk about their women's program women's a little team. bit. And we'll talk about uh, his men's team and what he expects out of them. Their season kicks off with uh, three really, really big games for them. Uh, a DT, D2 program that's going to be facing D1, D1. competition. A, a seasoned D1 competition. Yeah, so. two, two of them. <laughs> yeah. ACH, or, uh, Arizona State and Arizona too. both. So yeah. that's going to be a lot of fun. So we look forward to having Danny on board with us. Um, again, we're live here at the Ice Den in Chandler. We do this every Tuesday night. Puts it online on Friday. And everybody gets a chance to watch the show. Can you believe it's 17 episodes already? No, around? I can't. <laughs> and we're already talking going into mid-August. Yeah. Next week, we got a little sneak preview of what's going to happen next week. We're going to be up in Las Vegas. Uh, we'll do our show from up there with the uh, soft opening of City National Arena, the, the home of UNLV and yes. also the home of the uh, Vegas Golden Knights. Be exciting. Should be a lot of fun. I saw the other day that George McPhee was out, or uh, not George, but Murray Craven was out testing ice with yeah. his... Uh, skates and stick and give me some slap shots. New I, arena's gonna be I had a little awesome. fun with it because there were no no goals up there so we had nothing he could miss. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All he could do is ring the board. So <laughs> we'll be right back in uh, just a minute with our first step uh, first segment with Danny Roy from Grand Canyon University. The Ice Den Scottsdale has always been the coolest place in the desert. Now with the addition of the Ice Den Chandler, our two locations hosting five sheets of ice. Make the Ice Den your home for youth, travel, and adult hockey leagues. Our nationally recognized Learn to Skate programs offer world-class instruction for skaters of all ages. Our pro shop features equipment and apparel with the top hockey and figure skating brands. 18 Degrees Express with the Chili Bean Cafe make the Ice Den the perfect place to host your next birthday party or special event. Visit us online at coyotesice.com. All right, welcome into another edition of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. As you can see, we're live here at uh, Ice Den Chandler again, our home away from home for the most part when we're in the uh, Phoenix metro area. And our guest tonight, we're going to be, uh, like I called it earlier today, painting the ice purple with GCU. We got Danny Roy in uh, in house with us. So, Danny, welcome back to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. We're getting awful close to the start of hockey, aren't we? Yeah, it's. Uh... <laughs> Uh, for many programs, it's getting really close. Uh, we're still a month away here. I think ASU starts up in a couple weeks. Right. But their school starts a little bit before us. So, uh, yeah, move-in week is the 21st. Okay. Uh, so that's when students start coming in. Uh, and then the week after that, we'll have a couple open skates for all the new players to get to know our returning players. And then uh, we go right into camp first week of September, Labor Day. I always say that we're getting close to hockey season, but for you, I know the season's year-round. You're doing something hockey-wise, aren't you, all the time? Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a year-round job, um, but it's fun. It keeps you busy. Uh, it's definitely busy summers, but I think that the summer takes longer than the season takes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, this has been a long summer, a lot of work, uh, and we'll just, as soon as we start camp, it'll be uh, it'll be February in no time. Right. Yeah. So we talk about the start of, uh, of hockey season, we talk about the different levels, and you guys being at the ACH level, but even the last couple of years, what I've seen is the ACH level is getting better and better and more serious and more serious and more defined, yeah. right? You're, uh, you're a big time league. Yeah, um, the league has made a, made a major step in the right direction over the last, uh, I would say it's five, five, six years now. They've, right. they've definitely gone in the right direction. Um, they've added a I think uh, the executive director, um, who actually just stepped down, but while he was in charge, uh, brought in 20% more members than wow. we had in just a span of two years. Um, 
So, I mean, we've seen a lot of growth over the last two years, but we've also seen uh, the level of play increase a ton. Um, you know, it's always been it's always been pretty big at the Division One level, but right. it's uh, it's flooded its way into Division Two hockey, and, and Division Two hockey has picked up a ton. Um, and I know some D D three level right. uh, teams yeah. have also seen some of that. Um, so yeah, it's 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 exciting to see. I've been around the league since two thousand five, right? Uh, and it's 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 dramatically changed <laughs> <Right>. since then. <laughs> well, that's um, if, I'm, if I'm doing math right, that's twelve years, right? Yeah, yeah. Well. More people know about it. Right. Uh, more people go that route now. Uh, more players do. Um, they're they're starting to kind of lean more towards the ACHA than in some D three NCAA schools. They're starting to see uh, financially it's sometimes uh, cheaper right. to go that route. But you could also still play for a program that's uh, uh, just as good right. as a D three school. So it's exciting to see us competing with uh, an NCAA level at least uh, getting to that point. Right, and you're seeing, you know, we've talked about this and we just throw it out there again to kind of reiterate for people that don't know, but the changes that have happened locally here with you guys now, um, at, with a D2 team and a D3 team and, and striving mm -hmm. to get to that D1 level, right? Yeah. You got the University of Arizona, which is still D1, and then of course you got three teams or two teams over at ASU, right? D1 and D2. And, D2. Yep. and then you got UNLV now jumping up to D1, and you got two teams up at NAU, right? Yep. Yeah. D2 and D3. Yeah. So, I mean, take into what's going on in the desert southwest, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity, but more importantly, kids are playing college hockey, which means they're getting an education yes. too, right? Yes. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, given, it's definitely given the in-state high school student uh, a lot more choices uh, and opportunity. Uh, that's our, I mean, that's our goal for having three teams we want. We want every player at every level in the state of Arizona, uh, if they were to choose Grand Canyon University, to at least have that option of uh, potentially playing hockey. Uh, and it's something that uh, an Arizona high school hockey player on average doesn't really think of. Right. Uh, they, don't, they don't know that there's this huge uh, organization of uh, college hockey teams out there that, that they really can go and uh, potentially play college hockey. So at least in state they have uh, they have a lot of options now um, with with all that growth you talk about. So you can Angel? No, I was no? just gonna say that's amazing because uh, it's so expensive to go out of state to college and let alone worry about that on top of you know wanting to play hockey. So it's amazing to have all that in one in one one yeah. state, yeah. one area for us for the Arizona kids. So Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And for those of, that don't know, GCU and, and their opportunity for not only the great education, but the way you guys do your uh, academic scholarship type plan too is, is really kind of unique. So why don't you tell us a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so uh, uh, we, the, the university helps the student out a lot. Um, you know, we're, we are a private university, so we don't have, we don't have an in-state or out-of-state tuition. It's the same. It's all it's kind of lumped into the average of what between those two would be. Right. Um, so seven, it's a $17,000 a year um, tuition, um, but to help out the high school student coming out of high school uh, based on grades or, or uh, their SAT and ACT score, they're automatically uh, awarded a scholarship that they match up to. Uh, without having to apply for it, it's right. just through the yeah, admissions how great process. Is that? Yeah. Um, so, I think the base for a high school senior coming in uh, at a 3.0, I think the base is uh, almost four thousand dollars. Three money. That's huge. That's yeah. Incredible. Which which could help pay for a lot of your room and board if you're going to live on campus. If you're not going to live on campus, that drops your tuition down quite a bit. Right. Uh, and, and especially for an out-of-state high school student. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, you look at other comparable private universities um, out there, like uh, up in Minnesota or something like that. You look blank, I yeah, don't, bad, I don't know. Yeah. Whatever those, uh, all those private ones out there, there's, you're, you're looking at forty thousand dollars or so. So, what kind of tool is that for you recruiting? I mean, it helps out a ton, uh, especially uh, especially with our international students. Oh, I'm sure. Um, our Canadian kids uh, with uh, with the Canadian dollar the way it is right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's 
very more affordable for them, much more affordable for them to stay in the, in uh, Canada and, right. and just go to a school up there and uh, play hockey or not play hockey. Uh, but uh, GCU is really attractive to a lot of international students, and that tuition helps us uh, with that, um, especially if it's a player that we're really actively recruiting, and it's, it's helped out a lot. So when I drive by the campus or go on to the campus, is there ever a day that there's not an a, a earth mover somewhere on that campus? <laughs> yeah, right now, uh, right now they're, we're, uh, we're getting, getting there, I think, Close to the end of our uh, our ten athletic uh, facilities right, in two ask years, um, they're they're uh, finalizing or finishing up on our Boat Performance Center, which is where our NCAA athletes train. Um, but it's also where our our club sports, our hockey team, lacrosse, rugby, um, and the rest of our club sports have our workouts as well. Um, all state of the art equipment. Uh, lifting equipment, things like that. Um, but then they're also working on our baseball stadium, which is, is going to be huge. Right. It's, it, uh, every day I walk on campus, there's a new structure up uh, that they're they're working on. They're working on finalizing the, the stadium for the softball team. Uh, and then there's there's a few other big projects that I've been I've been in meetings for. Um, or uh, other club sports stuff. Like a, like a hockey rink, baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, so, so, uh, yeah. so is, is, the, is the 11th, 11th one going to be that big 4,000-seat arena? Uh, that's, that's not one of the, not on, one of the meetings. Come on, GCU, come on. That's not one of the official meetings that I've, I've sat in on. Um, that's definitely a hope that we have, um, and that's something that we'll, work, we'll work, continue to work towards growing our program and, and fueling the fire for that. But, yeah, no. Um, the university, I, I say it to anybody, it, if you see the university now, it's going to look different. Right. Um, two sure. months from now, three months from now. And if, if, it's, if it was a recruit I brought in uh, uh, last winter uh, and they saw the campus, it's going to look completely different to them this year or this fall when they come. Well, Danny, what we'll do is take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk a little bit about the women's program and fill us in on that, being the director of hockey operations, too. And then uh, we'll come back and do a third segment. We'll talk about your men's program and the schedule and all the good things happening for you guys. So let's take a quick break, and we'll come right back. Crime can happen to anyone at any time. Be a role model for the next generation. Become empowered. This is true life insurance. All right, welcome back to a second segment with uh, the head coach, the director of hockey operations, the uh, guy that gets the equipment, the guy <laughs> who schedules the game, books it. We've got a little bit of everything over at GCU. Danny Roy is with us on uh, another segment. So, Danny, let's talk a little bit about the women's program. That's new for you guys this year, new by talk now over the last year or so about this whole thing coming to an evolution and, and how things are going. So tell us a little bit about who's coaching it what you have for numbers and, and how that program's going. Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> Coach Natalie Rossi, she's, uh, she's been doing a great job uh, since she stepped in. Uh, we brought her on. Uh, she, she came over from the, the Lady Coyotes. Um, she has a, a great background in hockey. She's right. been playing her almost her whole life, uh, or skating her whole life as well. But she, she started as a figure skater originally. She likes to, she likes to tell that story all the time. <laughs> uh, but then she, she played college hockey as well uh, at SUNY Oswego and NCAA D3 level. So she's played a good level of hockey. She's had great coaches. She's been a coach. She's helped grow uh, grow program, a program out there in New Jersey uh, from, from one team to multiple teams. So uh, she, has, she has great, uh, great experience and, and wealth of knowledge. Um, and she has a ton of connections, which which shows with her recruiting. <laughs> I'm just gonna yeah, say that. she's recruited some great, yeah. great yeah, girls we had, this year. We, I mean, the the goal is numbers, obviously, to have a have yeah. a team. Um, but she's she's not only gotten numbers; she's she's gotten good quality players. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I know our goaltending is going to be solid. Our our defense is going to be pretty solid, and then our 
our offense. We have a, we have a good mix, uh, some good depth there. Uh, so it's going to be exciting to see. They might be a very competitive team for the first year. Yeah, and they start off with a, a very competitive schedule, right? They're, uh, they get some good competition with their cross-town rivals at ASU right off the get-go. So what do you expect out of that? Um, I think that will be the... That'll be the test of the rivalry. All right. Uh, you know, it's still young. Uh, ASU had had, a, had their year, and now they're they're starting their second year as far as figuring out what their culture is going to be as far as the program. Um, we're just starting out, so it's you know, it's two two still very new teams um, coming together, but it'll be like the tester as far as what what the rivalry might end up being because. Uh, you know, we'll see him twice there. We'll see him once out in Colorado right. for our w, WCHL uh, tournament. And then uh, we'll see them uh, for two games later in the season uh, at our at, uh, AZ Ice Peoria. Uh, so by that time, the, they've played each other three times. So we'll, yeah, that, and, that'll be some, and, uh, and we'll kind of get a glimpse of where we are in, in the standings <laughs> and, and things like that. And, uh, yeah, see how it goes. Well, I would have to think also that scheduling games with uh, two teams in, in the Phoenix metro area now is a lot more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, comfortable for teams that might want to come down knowing that they got two different teams to play when they get here? Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, it's made an easier travel destination for yeah, sure. Yeah, there you um, go. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Especially, uh, especially in the, on the women's side of things. With there's, uh, I believe there's only about 26, 27 women's Division One ACHA teams right. um, in the country. So um, when 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 those teams travel, they like to play three to four games uh, sure. in a weekend to sense. to make it worth it. Um, but also, uh, you know, the, the schedule you t with that kind of schedule, we tend to take a couple a week to almost two weeks off in between games sometimes. So. Uh, at least being able to get four games in that weekend allows you to have a full 20, 25 game schedule. Two uh, part, two part question for you yeah. on this one. Number one, how are you going to get enough Havocs out there to, to be everywhere to uh, be your crowd support? You got two teams now, right? Plus you got you got two teams. Plus you got a women's team. So you're going to challenge them, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, but well, it's it's going to be up to the players. It's always ultimately up to the players. They, if, if you guys have friends on campus, you bring you get your friends to come out and support you at, at right? your games. Um, it's a free entertainment for them. All they have to do is get there. Um, but then, I mean, we're out at AZ Ice Peoria. There's always something going on there. Right. Always. Um, I know the Lady Coyotes have some some ice out there this year. Okay. So so they'll be in the same building as well. So, um, so it, it's we're always I think we're always going to be able to have some sort of fan base out there. Right. Um, but we're also going to attract a lot of new. I, I think people will be very surprised. Um, you think of women's hockey, but I've seen some women hockey players play rougher than some men's hockey players. So it's not like it's going to be just a little, you know, just a bunch of women playing hockey. There's a lot of action going on out there too. So yeah, I mean, we, we, we you know, you, you watch you watch women's Olympic hockey. Um, you watch Canada and U.S. play, and it turns into a very physical game. Very physical. Um, it's 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 dubbed as non-contact hockey, but uh, you know they, it it gets aggressive. I mean, it, it means there's no blatant open ice hits and things right. like that. But you'll see elbows thrown. You'll oh see, yeah. <laughs> you'll see body checking going on. Um, it gets physical, and, it, and it's it's you, you have players who are passionate about the sport that they're playing and, and want to win and want to compete. So it's. Um, it's it's a fun game to watch, and I, you know, we're really excited about it, and um, it's going to create a lot of buzz for women's hockey in the valley. Um, I know a lot of girls are going to. I've I've already seen it with ASU already. Um, you, they just had their their youth right. hockey camp, and they had a great turnout for that. Um, so you add a second college team to the mix, and, and you're just going to build. Switch. Which is really cool because when, when my son played hockey and he was younger, there were never any girls on his team. And now, I mean, I've seen teams where it's almost a third of the team is is females playing hockey. And so literally growing the game for the females here also yep. is, is yep. really good. Cool. Uh, yeah. That's the goal is to get get some new 
new uh, girls to come out and start playing hockey, whatever age they are, uh, whether it's high school or, or just starting out at, at uh, five years old. Um, and it, it gives it gives those girls something to look forward to, something to look up to, because it, who knows by the time they hit college, uh, who knows what other universities close yeah. by in the area have hockey. You may even um, see a woman in the NHL. Yeah. <laughs> you never know, right? It's, it's, it's going to help. It's going to help keep that out west. It's definitely going to help keep hockey out west for them, for them, and not not make them have to go too far right. away from home. So, so part two of my question <laughs> is how are the guys and the girls getting along on the ice? Is, is support mutual both ways? Um, what you've seen so far? Well, I haven't had any of them together yet. Uh, <laughs> I, they, they follow each other on Instagram and, okay. and Twitter already. They, I mean, they, I, 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 I'm assuming they've, they've seen the posts as far as who's committed who hasn't already. Uh, linked up with each other as far as friends on that so right so they they kind of already created that relationship uh, the open skates that we're going to have at the end of august are going to be open to both men's and women so it's basically going to be whoever shows up and skates around so they'll, they'll get to skate together um, during the season we'll find certain practice times and things like that to to, to kind of put together those scrimmages and right. fun stuff so that way the entire program is is working together and, and trying to help each other out any girl on guy scrimmages in the works or that'd be kind of fun to well, watch that's, actually that's kind of, yeah that's, that's a little bit what i'm talking about yeah, yeah it's, uh, if we have if you know, if, if they're, they're able to get it in their schedule to, to get our practice together. Because we practice back-to-back um, on Wednesdays especially. Um, and if we could kind of split that practice in half and do a little That would be really fun to watch. Um, yeah. But, yeah, try and help each other out. Well, the other thing I noticed, and you brought it to my attention early, was your schedule is now on a team-friendly app. So I know a lot of uh, schools are looking at apps being a way to communicate with people and Tell me a little bit about that. How did you get involved with that, and, and how is it working for you so far? Um, well, I saw Loyola Marymount actually created their own app. Okay. Um, really nice. Um, and I, you know, it was just one random thing. I decided, well, try and find some, like a free platform to use. Right. Um, I'm, I, I could do digital, like I could, I could kind of create Photoshop stuff, and, and I've done, I, I handle all of our social media stuff, but I, I don't know how to code. Right, an app code map, right? Yeah. Um, so I found Team App. It's, uh, it's 100% free. Um, basically, they give me the platform. Um, I created the, the, uh, the image that's in it, um, right. and then I just select the buttons that I want. Um, and at least it's a good starting point for us as far as an app. I would definitely like to um, find find something for ourselves. I uh, I dug it up, yeah. um, and I really like it strictly from the fact that you get everything on here. You have your roster, your schedule, you have your team website uh, link. But the nice part about it is when you go to the schedule, um, the part that I like is... Oh, it's calendared for you? You got the calendar and you got the whole breakdown, right? Cool. So. So like when I'm on the road as much as I am, I'm able to track down where you guys are, when we can get you in for feature games and stuff like that. So we're looking forward to really being able to uh, to use that app as an advantage. It's not like you have to open up the computer. And yeah, the that's the, the nice thing about the apps, or, or at least having an app, is it's, it's right there. You don't need to worry about searching for the website or keeping your browser open. You just kind of click on it, figure it out. We There's a... The capability of doing live scoring. I'm not sure sure how it works out yet. I'm gonna definitely test it oh, out. Oh, that would be very game. nice. Yeah, that would be very nice. Um, but it should be able to do something like that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it'll be it'll be a fun thing to test for this year. Well, now that we got the app, we'll take another quick break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about your men's program. Talk about your schedule. As I look at it right now, we got three. The first three games are gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah. So if you live in the desert southwest, uh, you're not gonna to want to miss these three games. We'll be right back with another segment with Danny Roy.
All right, we're back for segment three of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. <laughs> and we got Danny Roy still here. We, we strapped him down. Believe it or not, there, there's no ropes, but we do have him sent super glued to the chair over here. So he's not getting away just yet. We got to talk men's hockey. Mm-hmm. That's your forte. You're the head coach, right? Yep. So you got two, two teams this year. First thing that I saw on that handy dandy app is I'm looking at September 22nd and 23rd. Some really big games against some really quality opponents, yeah. or a quality opponent. Yeah. Tell us about it. Yeah, well, uh, um, our, our overall goal, of course, is to move our program up to D1 ACHA. Um, the, the next step to doing that is start start building in a hybrid schedule and, and, and testing our guys out, seeing where we are, um, getting our guys kind of a glimpse of uh, what teams what, what teams are like at, at that level, what are they like to play against, because uh, you're playing against bigger, stronger, uh, yep. faster, more skilled. But you're playing against smart players, too, who are able to make in-game adjustments. Um, they're not going to play the same system the entire game. Sometimes they're going to change it up because the coaches are smart. Yep. Um, so it's a, it's a completely different atmosphere. It's not just go hard all game and, and, and battle your opponent out. It's it's uh, you also kind of you have to be disciplined within your system and, and have poise. Uh, so so the first step was to add some games in there. Luckily, we have uh, two two solid opponents here in the in the surrounding area. Uh, we have ASU who has their D1 ACHA team, uh, and then we have U of A. Uh, both coaches both coaches were uh, welcoming to us, uh, setting up games together. Um, I, I believe they see the positive of uh, hopefully having another team uh, that they don't have to fly to right. on the weekend. Uh, it, it saves on the budget. It allows you to actually go and travel somewhere else uh, with that money that you would have spent that weekend anyway. Um, but yeah, we got uh, uh, September 22nd and 23rd is our first uh, first home opener of the season. Uh, right, 6:30, right? 6:30 start time both right. both nights. Um, and that's over at Peoria. It's over at ACI's Peoria. Peoria. Okay. Um, yeah, we have uh, uh, Arizona State ACHAD won that game. Uh, that's going to be very very tough. Uh, a good game for our guys. Good test. Um, you know, we're. I, I have a lot of confidence that we, we could be very competitive. Right. Um, but it's. I mean, they they also play UNLV the weekend before, so they have a good. Right. They have a good uh, start to their their weekend before we play them, um, where they could work out any kinks, figure out <laughs> figure out any bad habits that guys got over the off season, uh, and get a chance to learn how each other play uh, before playing us. So, so they're not going to be rusty right. when they hit our rink. Um, so we got to be ready. We only have two weeks of practice before we play them. So it's going to be a challenge as a coach and staff, but as players as well. Um, and then we, uh, the weekend after, we go and uh, play U- University of Arizona down in Tucson. Right. That'll be fun. Um, that'll be a fun game. Uh, the guys like playing in arenas. Um, and, and it's once again, it's going to be uh, Chad's. Chad's got a. He's got a good roster this year. Right. He's, he's picked up some good recruits. Um, so it's going to be another challenge. So our first three games of the season are very strong, yeah. uh, but then it doesn't get any easier after that. <laughs> yeah. Our first D2 opponents, Colorado State, and they're very, very And you get them at team. home, too, on and Sunday the first, right? Yeah. So that'll be nice to at least get that game off at home. Then you go on the road for a little while, and then you come back and you get mid-October games with the D2 team yep. from ASU, right? Yep. That, uh, that October 13th game right now, we're planning on having that be a breast cancer game. Um, the goal is to have it at the Gila River. Oh, yeah. That was... So that's, we're trying to make that our feature game for uh, the first semester where uh, the university is really going to get behind and, and promote it. And, and, and try to outdo our uh, our tennis that we had last year. Last year. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so is there anything in stone yet for Gila River or are you still working the kinks out of that? It's uh I mean it's 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 basically we rent the ice so it's yeah. it's kind of you know, sitting there. But the date's there. The date's there. Either way, um, it, we have the we have the ice at AZI Peoria if we have to make the changes. Um, you know our Everything's subject to change usually. Yeah, always. Um, so I always recommend check out our social media pages. We usually keep any any updates, anything like that, and, and post them on there ahead of time. That way, you're not showing up to the wrong location at the wrong time or the wrong date. But, but 
Yeah, as of right now, the, the plan is to hopefully have that game out there at Gila River against Arizona State D2. As I peruse the uh, the schedule and I get into mid-November, I have to ask you about the Beehive, because you guys went to the Beehive last year, right? Yeah. What's that experience like? You know, I talked about going up there last year. This year, it may work into the schedule. I get up there and see those games, but what's that like? Because that's a lot of teams in a small area, right? It's a, um, yeah, we, we split split games between Ogden and Logan, Utah. Um, Ogden's an awesome rink. Right. Well, actually, uh, all the Utah rinks are great because uh, when when the Salt Lake games went through there, they they yeah, built yeah. all these rinks. Yeah. Amazing rinks there, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they're awesome. So Ogden's where Weber State plays. It's a fun rink to play in. Um, Logan is where Utah State plays. Uh, if you're playing Utah State there, it's a loud building. It's loud. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of cowbells and things like that. Um, but it's a fun tournament. Yeah, it's uh, four days of... Um, Usually teams that are in the top 12, top 15 yeah. um, in the in the ACHA D2 West. Um, so it's it's a tough weekend. It's a good weekend to build ranking. Um, so it's a challenge too. It's where you get to kind of see how how your team could possibly do at a at a national tournament or a regional tournament where um, you're, you're being tested for four days straight. So you come out of that, then you go into a Thanksgiving break, and. You really are going to know at that point what, what kind of team you got, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, that's going to be setting you up for the run, the tournament run coming up, what I would call the second half of the season, right? Yeah, that's, uh, I mean, that's right there is where, you know, we're going to see if we're, we're in the injury <laughs> bug or not, because that's where it hit last year. Um, and that's where it hits a lot of teams. Uh, we have a better workout schedule this year as far as off ice training and, right. and, and things like that to help prevent a lot of injuries. Um, but yeah, by that point, we you know we should have a good idea of where we're sitting as far as first few ranking um, periods, uh, as well as what our what our um, record looks like. And, and as as the schedule goes from there, it's um, you know it's it's a tough schedule all the way through. Yeah, um, absolutely. We have a, we have a little fun uh, fun exhibition game. Yeah, at the tell end me about of, that one. We're uh, we'll, we'll end our uh, we'll end our first semester December tenth. Um, against uh, Tate's Tate's uh, OSHA premier program, so Tate Green, the head right. coach at Arizona State D two. Yep. Um, he runs a, a premier program for Arizona high school hockey, um, and it's basically a it's a travel high school team. Um, but we're gonna our whole pro so our, our men's D two and our men's D three team will uh, will have an exhibition game with their their U eighteen and their U sixteen program. Um, what we'll do is we'll do. Uh, two stop time, uh, stop time, twenty-five minute periods with the ice cut in between, where uh, our D three team will split up and, and match up teams with their their U sixteen, and they'll play each other. It's a great idea. Uh, That's cool. And then our U, their U eighteen team will uh, do the same with our our D two team. Uh, so it'll be kind of be a fun way for uh, for high school kids to ex- explore our program. Um, we'll take them on campus. We'll do an entire campus tour, campus day with them. Um, as well, and then give them an entire experience of what GCU ice hockey is. Mm. It's a That's great awesome. idea. Yeah. yeah, we've got the schedule covered. Let's talk a little bit about players. What? Uh, let's start in the goaltending. Where do you? Uh, where do you see your goaltending? Uh, very good. Uh, very solid. Um, our 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 number one guy right now going into camp, which could could, could ultimately change. Right. Um, but as far as right now, he he's coming in from Alberta. Uh, Calgary, Alberta. Um, he played in the HHL with Calgary. Um, he's, I mean, he's. I've watched, I've watched uh, a lot of video on him, like more than I needed to. But uh, me being a goalie, I could, I could just see it. Uh, the battle, the compete. Um, he, he moves very quickly. He's, he's very aggressive. When he when he's on, uh, and he's he's going to help us a ton in the back end. Uh, Mike Norris is going to be returning. He was our last season goalie. Yep. Um, he's he's a competitor. He's actually been he's been on the ice a ton. 
Um, he's actually been get, he's been getting invited out all the time with the the Coyotes and those guys on a regular basis. Almost. Yeah, that's good. So he's been getting to see a lot of good quality shots. Um, so yeah, goaltending. There's we're gonna have three guys who are gonna battle it out for sure. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be uh, tough for us to or for me to pick a, a, a starting goalie each night. That's um, a nice problem to have. Though. But yeah, yeah it, at least it's gonna cause them to push each other and. Yeah, that's that's stepped up a ton. So let's talk about the defensive core. You got your captain coming back. That's going to yep. be where it starts, I'm guessing. Yep. Uh, Brett Kramer's uh, excited. He's getting getting antsy, ready to get started. <laughs> um, uh, after that, we've we've added a lot of uh, a lot of depth on defense. Um, last season, it, we we struggled majorly in that area. Um, the, the issue was definitely not once we got the puck. We, right. Once we got the puck, we could take care of ourselves. And it, it was more, we spent way too much time in our own zone. We made too many turnovers trying to get out of our own zone, which caused a lot of uh, odd man rushes, which you know, puts a lot of stress on our goaltending. And, yeah. and, and as well as our forwards having to back check back every time. So uh, we have, uh, I, know, I know we have six defensemen every night that we could put in. That's good. Um, and we roll six defensemen in the lineup against any team. You know, one of the things I saw with your team last year was I'd see spurts of offense where you guys would challenge a team, maybe get a lead, and then it looked like either fatigue or just lack of talent on defense. You gave up one here or there. I think back to the games up in uh, Prescott Valley with NAU, and that was the same type of thing. You guys had them, and then all of a sudden you gave up a couple of late goals or you gave up eight goals that turned the Yeah, we, we definitely had a habit last year of uh, – of scoring and not responding yeah. immediately after a goal the right way, we would uh, we'd score and the next group would go out and we would we would most likely give up a goal within Relax two minutes. Of that. <laughs> um, every single every single time, which you know, which drains your bench because it, it, it's it's all a lot of hard work to try and get that first goal. Right. Um, and if if you if you you know let up and, and all of a sudden you scored on again, you're back down to like a two goal or one goal. Or, I mean, it, 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 it hurts your momentum for sure. So um, hopefully our defense uh, our defense will push that. But I think our, de- our defense is also going to create a lot of offense in the offensive zone. Right. Um, we have some very solid shooters. We have some very skilled. Yeah, tell us a little skilled. bit about that offensive group. I know you got some guys that can put the puck in the net if they can get the puck. Yeah, we have, we're, we're bringing in some guys who play smart but play gritty, um, know where to be, know how to support the play. We have uh, a couple younger right out of high school guys who are on, who, who have great hockey IQs. Um, so as, as coaches, it's, we're going we're gonna to meet up as, as a coaching staff, talk about, you know, what, what kind of system and, and offensive and dif- defensive and things like that that we, we were hoping to run uh, prior to camp. Once camp goes, and then we hit our first practice, we'll see how how it changes, if anything changes. But um, yeah, our, our offense, our offensive players give us a lot of uh, a lot of creativity as a coaching staff as far as uh, what we want to do. It, it's it's no longer going to be a dump and chase night every night. Right. It's, it's, it's definitely going to change up. Uh, there's there might be nights where we might have to still revert back to that run a trap and, and if that works against a, a team that we think uh, we could run it against but other than that uh, we should be able to we should almost be able to j- jump four guys up on a rush and catch a team off yeah, there you go. on a on a change or a bad change and, and capitalize quite a bit especially on the power play our power play should be much better this year well after talking to some of the guys that played for you last year i can tell you that just the expressions and the, the words I heard from us, they, they're expecting some challenges. They're expecting some competition to find their spots again. I'm guessing you're seeing the same thing. Yeah. Um, as, as long as as long as uh, guys stay healthy and we we, right. we have uh, a full roster to pick from uh, on an open night, yeah, it's, it's going to be a battle to not be that one or two guy sitting in street clothes watching, <laughs> watching the game for the night. Cause, uh, you know, as a as a player, and if you really uh, and you're you're really itching to get out there, it's it's not fun sitting there watching somebody else do your job. Boy, absolutely. Um, yeah. You know, whether or not you are his best friend um, <laughs> um, on the team, it, you, you, it's still kind of a, a, a 
kick to the gut yeah, it's when, a coach, yeah, when, when a coach tells you, you know what, it's, it's not you tonight, sorry, you got to sit out, uh, which then pushes you harder. Um, it, as a player, it pushes you harder, but then you pushing harder pushes that guy harder and pushes that guy harder, and it, and it creates some of that competition, and that's, that's uh, one little thing that we didn't have enough of last year, and by that mid, mid-semester break there, or just, uh, school year break in December that guys got a little uh, little comfortable and a little lazy. Not going to happen this year? No. no. <laughs> we, we will. Definitely can't because we start our, first, we start our second semester off against uh, two against U of A again. So. Right. Um, yeah, I, I'm, we, we're not taking it easy on the guys. Uh, they like that. They like to be challenged. So, but but the, the fun part is going to be is going to be that we should be in in the game for the long or for the yeah. length of the game for now and it it, sh- it shouldn't be where we we're in the game for two periods and then the third period we struggled or we were in the game for the first period the second game struggled or second period struggled and then back in the game in the third period it, it should be 60 minutes of pushing the other team to to prove that they could beat us and, um, you know, we're, we're still going to see some losses but uh, it, it's going to be the response as far as not streaking in the wrong direction and, and you're you know, I mean you're talking about a year two program here so it's not like you guys have been around forever yeah you know you got still some growing pains to go through oh, yeah. so I think you're going in the right direction the challenge is laid out there now GCU has painted the ice purple <laughs> so the rest of the guys are going to have to skate through it get it shaved down and try to get their own colors out there but uh, we thank you for coming in always great to have you in studio and the chance to uh, talk to ECU hockey we'll look forward to seeing you in about what 45 days or so yeah give or take a few 45 days I think until our first game so. awesome awesome yeah well we want to thank Danny for coming in and uh, we'll be back to wrap up this segment and this episode of Hockey Talk with Angel on the Ice Club in today's odor elimination sanitizing and deodorizing market Air spaces and fabrics are treated with very aggressive, highly toxic, and often very dangerous but cheap chemical-based solutions. These chemicals have harmful residues and pollutants that can impact your health and the well-being of those around you. This is the bad news. The good news is there's something better. That something is OxyPal. OxyPal is a fast-growing company based in Phoenix, Arizona, with franchises opening across North America. OxyPal has developed a way to eliminate, not mask or disguise, all organic-based odors in any airspace or on any fabric surface with ozone, also called trioxygen. Ozone is present in the atmosphere, and it is what protects our planet, our environment, and every living thing on Earth. Through years of research and development, OxyPal has perfected a way to harness and apply this powerful solution to purify air spaces and fabric surfaces safely and effectively, eliminating all organic bacteria, viruses, mold, fungi, and allergens on the molecular level. OxyPal has designed and perfected many next generation and evolutionary alternative products and services safe for people, pets, and our planet. The solutions offered by OxyPal are stronger, safer, non-toxic, and a great value. Visit our website and online store today at www.oxypal.com. On our website, you can make a service appointment, buy products, or learn more about us and our great franchising opportunities. All right, welcome back to Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. We're here to wrap up another episode, episode 17 in the books. Three great segments with Danny Roy. Yep. I mean, is there anything that guy doesn't know when it comes to GCU hockey? No, he's he, <laughs> and he's amazing. He's had his hands full, and he's done an incredible job with with uh, with all the programs he's he's over. Starting his second year, and he started it from scratch, and. The way things are rolling right now, we're going to see an on-campus arena. I'm going to predict that within the next three to five years. Yeah. I mean, it's just a natural. When you've got that many uh, men's and women's hockey players on campus, it's time to build that arena. Absolutely. PCU, very, very progressive in what they do. So I would not be a bit surprised if that happens in the next three to five years. Neither and, would I. And, and can you imagine that? We're talking about all these arena issues, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the one that pops up first is Grand Canyon. <laughs> Be, be a few a little... people surprised by that one, but we won't be, right? No, not at all. So we want to thank Danny for coming out tonight, spending some time with us. 
next week, like I said, we're going to be up in Las Vegas. Yeah. So it'll be a great show with uh, talking to you and LV Hockey as they get ready to kick off their season. And uh, we'll be talking a little Golden Knights hockey as they get closer to their training camp coming up in September. And obviously the new facility is, is the talk of Vegas right now. It's uh, the City National, City National Arena. Arena. Yeah. It's going to be a lot of fun. I noticed one of the, the logos on the ice said Foley Family Winery. Hmm. hmm. Who do you hmm. think owns that one, huh? No clue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hear he owns a restaurant in there or something, too, maybe. Yeah, huh? <laughs> he's got the restaurant as well, so Mr. Foley's doing okay. Yeah. Uh, we look forward to being up in Vegas. Again, It's uh, it's been too long since we've been up there, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 always too long when you're going to Vegas, right? <laughs> right? So we'll look forward to that next week. But for this week, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Thank our sponsors. We have JPI. Mm -hmm. Also, want to thank Oxypile. Yeah, and, and uh, our friends at Swag Hockey. Obviously, and Josh right now is over in Los Angeles as we speak. Yeah, he's playing the the, the national uh, firefighters and police games over world. there. World, world, that's right. World, world. police yeah. and fire games. Yeah, looks really it's, cool. It's yeah. a big deal. I saw him on uh, on Facebook today yeah. in the parade in the <laughs> in the yeah. tunnel. So it looked like a lot of fun. So we'll thank those sponsors. We also want to thank uh, those behind the scenes for us. Robert Schneidmiller on camera as always doing a great job, and our executive producer. Terry Strandy doing a great job of keeping us online, keeping us on time. So we'll go ahead and, uh, and sign off for the night and let you know that this is episode 17 of Hockey Talk with Angel and the Ice Devil. And that's a wrap. <laughs>